horizon, illuminating the work already being done on the trading post rig, which the drones had all but destroyed. On scaffolds, crews of Cazadoris and Sky People worked by torchlight into the night. X walked down the platform to Magnolia and Tun, both of them looking at the trading post rig. Victor was too injured to make this journey, but X knew that the former slave would be here if he could. The warship passed the platform bearing the hive, renamed Vanguard. The airship was still secured to the rig, but was being prepared to make the journey across the ocean to find the divers and bring them home. X would be on that flight. But first, the islands must be safe. That meant tracking down the ITC Ranger aircraft supercarrier, which had delivered the machines to the islands. After the defectors went offline, the carrier had drifted away, into the storms beyond the barrier of the Vanguard Islands. Raven's Claw was hunting the ship. The hatch opened behind X. Heavy boots pounded on the platform. A group of warriors, led by the Cazador General Forge, stepped into the command center on the superstructure known to naval personnel as the Island. The tall, stone-faced general pounded his chest armor in salute to X. Behind Forge stood the freshly promoted militia lieutenant Wynn, who would help defeat the machines during their attack on the islands. Beside him was the Barracuda warrior Sergeant Willis, now leader of the elite squad that had helped in the victory against Horn on Aruba. His valor and battle had earned him a new name, Assassino, or Slayer. By his side was Bromista, a man known for his joking off the battlefield and the accuracy of his crossbow on it. The bald Cazador was the only other surviving Barracuda from the war against the Skinwalkers. Behind the two veterans stood nine more of the most illustrious Cazador soldiers left in the army, including Sergeant Jorge Gran Jefe Mata. Gran Jefe was not only the biggest Cazador left, he had also been a member of El Pulpo's personal guard. On the deck below, fifty more veteran Cazador warriors stood alongside twenty-five militia soldiers. The bow of Raven's Claw cleaved the waves with its whale-skull figurehead approaching the storms beyond the invisible line. X stood in silence, thinking of the Helldivers in Tanzania. They wouldn't all be coming home. Darkness enveloped the ship as it broke through the wall. Lightning arced across the sky and thunder echoed in the clouds. Miles moved up beside X, nudging his leg. It'll be okay, boy, X said. His loyal companion lowered his head in the gusting wind that blasted the warship. Rain sheeted down on the soldiers on the deck. Two teams manned the fifty caliber machine guns with the last belts of ammunition. They wouldn't do anything against the aircraft carrier. The restored Mark 45 turret mounts with barrels that fired 127mm shells could take out any defectors that may be operational. If it came to that, the torpedoes the skinwalkers had loaded into Raven's Claw would knock a good-sized hole in the carrier and send her to the bottom. X hoped not, but he was always prepared for a fight. The wind grew more intense, and he raised his prosthetic arm to Magnolia. Take Miles inside, he said. The thoughts pinballing through his mind ceased when he saw the supercarrier's outline. The nuclear-powered floating fortress loomed out of the darkness, drifting aimlessly in the storm. Or so it seemed. X unslung his assault rifle, already loaded with armor-piercing bullets, and chambered the first round. The gray wall of metal grew larger in the distance. Okay, you inanimate bastards, he growled under his breath. Get ready, Lieutenant Wynne shouted. General Forge barked orders in Spanish, and the deck came alive. The Mark 45 mounts rotated, aiming their barrels and preparing to fire their 127mm shells toward the massive dark silhouette. X went inside the command center. Captain Two Skulls stood at the helm with his back to X, the death's head tattoo on the back of his shaved scalp staring out from black eye sockets. X joined him at the viewports. Talk to me, Cap, he said. Tell me this ship is dead in the water. Ah, King Xavier. Captain Two Skulls looked over a screen. Our scans show the nuclear engines are running, but we don't know their available power at this point. X stared at the distant silhouette, considering the orders he was about to give. He didn't want to risk more lives, but they had no choice. Keep Raven's Claw here.